Yep. Tell me all about it. You got a shoot tonight. Yeah. Uh, this is the finish of five days of shooting. Wow, man. Five yeah. days in a row. Uh, it was like one day on Sunday, then Mon Monday off, then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Are you dead? Pretty tired. I mean, it's funny. This director, like, he shoots a full length feature film, like 110 pages in like 120, actually, in five days. But the uh, some of the days, you know, he finishes at six. 6 p.m. It's not like you're doing night shoots or anything. It's honestly something to implore for you. I brought this up that like it does make me think like what's everyone else's excuse? Yeah, it's run and gun. It's as efficient as possible. People have time, and he gets big celebrities for these things. Yeah, for these time movies, and that's because they know that they won't have to. He was telling me all about it. They they don't have to go far. They don't have to go to Canada. They don't have to go to this. They go to that. You get some of these celebrities because they'll shoot in the back of Malibu. Right. And they do uh, like really run and gun quick. They usually get good food for lunch. He's got his go-to investors. He hits them with it. Everyone gets paid a little amount, but they he's got like a little repertory company. Like he just uses it and does it. And he's making features. He's making it happen. That's making cool. features, he churns them out for a lifetime. This one's going to come out in April. Wow. So there's, I think... As a filmmaker, you have to have that methodology in your back pocket and be able to do that. And it's not easy. It's coming from a lifetime of working, speaking of which. But, uh, you know, he also, he cranks out these movies that, you know, they're they're definitely, the writing's fine. It's cool. And like, dude, the, you know, I'm doing mostly, it's like one master, one close-up, one close-up. Wow. And yeah. like a couple takes per shot. Yeah. And there's like, you know, he's big on rehearsal. He only hires actors that know their lines frontwards and backwards. It's right. a lot of talky talky. He he tells you, you know, you got have to be rehearsing in the on the side when you're not uh up yet. He's got it down to a science. Did you have formal days for rehearsal and camera rehearsal? Or no, 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 no. It's just you show five up. days. Five days. And it's all it's all pretty much on your shoulders, right? Because you're the lead and you've got like all the dialogue. Um, there's probably three, there's definitely three leads. I was third on the call sheet. Um, and the couple, you know, no, they had obviously a ton of stuff. I had a ton of stuff, especially today was my biggest day. It was all kind of the scenes later in the movie where like I have the climactic killing sprees and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh and dude, that stuff was all great. Like, it really. Uh, for instance, I had this one scene where I'm supposed to be torturing the girl, and I, I'm holding her ransom, and I have her tied up, and I didn't know how the blocking was going to be. I didn't know how it was going to turn out, but once we get in rehearsal, get in our spots, he does it simply, and yeah, I know you also know working with him that you just have to go with the flow. You have to like be able to adjust quick and i totally how did i why did it go so well because the master felt decent rehearsal and the master felt decent it get, got better every time but then once it gets to her close-up she did the close-up first mm -hmm. it was on her and once she went to close-up she got to really act out all the like specific physical stuff and yeah. that sucked me in i i had to react off that and it completely changed how I was going to do things. And I went with my instincts and I found stuff through that. That was like really popped. It was really good. And then I brought that for my close up. I did some of that same stuff. And I think for the most part, it was great. Like there, I really got some great stuff out of this. Some great colors. I'm stoked to see you in this role, man. This is going to be fun. It's true. Thanks. I was telling people that I hope I wasn't playing it too like chill and nice to counter the lines that I'm saying that are like kind of crazy in this and just the situation is kind of crazy. And people were like, no, dude, you, it, you kind of scared us. Like it's freaky. <laughs> That's the so, way to do it too, though. Right. Like that juxtaposition between these are crazy lines. You don't want to overplay it. It is. I mean, 
it's just there's a, a few scenes that it could go either way. Like it was like scenes where I confess my love for the the woman you know who's married, and I end up tort like trying to torture and kill, but. I said, tell her, like, you know, like, well, you know, are you happy? You know, you shouldn't be selling for anything less than happiness with your life. And I notice things and I can't ignore my feelings for you and stuff like that. And all that stuff, like I was playing it sincere and like I genuinely was well-meaning and like wanted the best for her. And then it just gets to a point where, yeah, I mean, there's scenes where I, I know that I just like killed her brother-in-law and I tried to kill her husband and I'm in there and I'm like trying to just be like, well, I didn't come over here just to ask how they were. Like I, you know, I, I but then again, just thinking back, even I think I played all that. Right. That's great, man. We should get this guy on the pod. You think you could swing that? That would be legendary. He might not even do it because he's such an old school like doesn't have time for stuff but that could be a great opportunity i'll ask my mom what she thinks she knows him too but because he because he's shooting like uh how many pages is this like 120 yeah that's oh i'm doing the math here that's 24 pages on average per day i've never Mm -hmm. heard of that you know industry standard is like six yeah so is it all like Tell me the mechanics of it. Like, is it all one location? Is it kind of simple? Like, he he does like a couple takes per shot. It's sounding like, yeah. And by the way, I'm just thinking too. He did tell me a lot of the mechanics of his conversations with investors. He man. said, yeah, it's, he would know how to help you, man. He uh, he said Hallmark and these companies, they said they won't shoot in L.A. And he's like, that's because they haven't worked with the right producer. LA can be the cheapest place to shoot at when you have the locations. Right. You have the talent that'll work for like below scale. Mm -hmm. Um, You have uh, the stuff built in. Yeah. But anyway, you're what you brought up was what what again? Um, Like the mechanics, the investor conversations he was telling you about. Just any of that stuff would be really helpful to hear. Like what, what was he saying? Totally agree. I, I mean, that was that was kind of it. I was actually really impressed that he has this system in place where yeah, where he gets Vivica Fox, who's in Kill Bill, and so she's a producer right. on some of his right. stuff. He gets like Tara Reed, like some of these like campier, like kind of you know, it's not their heyday in Hollywood by any means. And they know it'll get on Lifetime. They know they'll get seen. They de- they know what's in it for them, and it mm-hmm. doesn't take much effort. And he just rolls out the red carpet and does it quick. Uh, and he's fun. You know, he's he's a character, but uh, he's an encyclopedia of film and stuff, too. So he's, he's got a good thing. And he does. Independent- what was the vibe or the the culture that he set there? Because for me, like striking that balance between, you know, it's like a warm and inviting set and people are having a good time. But at the same time, you're driving shit. Yeah. Like, how did he ride the balance between those two things? He's a stickler. He's especially with this. There's no like stars on it. He's he's very drill sergeant. Got it. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. And that's and I'm I'm like leaning more towards that direction too, because especially for these lower budgets and you just got to get stuff done. You know, also sometimes what I'm learning too is like talent sometimes appreciates that. Like they're looking for that type obviously be collaborative but like don't be a complete dick but like you got to keep things moving especially yeah. after five days that's no that's interesting that's probably the key is to keep things moving but at the same time it's probably you got to size up whatever situation it is and face that yeah right you got he, different elements per shoot well what i will say i respected he's probably had so many bad experiences that he like is really sensitive to stuff but you know, if he hears actors laughing too much on the sides, like you'll do a big dramatic scene and everyone always, it's so cliche to like the actors immediately after just like, it's like cut and it's like, you almost got me. <laughs> and everyone just starts like giggling and laughing, like, like joking. About the scene. And he's just like, none of that. Yeah. Like guys stay. In let it. 
like in it, but even more that like let the director be able to focus. Mm -hmm. He can't be distracted. So it's like after the scene, he wants it quiet so that he can talk with the AD to like figure out shit. Right, right. I mean, I can't imagine uh, the pressure of like thinking about being in his shoes. Obviously, you too. Like you're going through all these, this emotional range. You got to be in it. You're saying you're following your instincts, like depending on where it's going. Yeah. That stuff is all really tough. And I can't do that. Like that's why I'm a filmmaker because the emotional exhaustion of that stuff to me it's like i feel the director it's more mentally taxing because you gotta it's just a puzzle piece of you've got to get all the shots in while at the same time navigating the actors all that stuff but for you it's like it's such an emotional drain it's not as hard for me i will say i guarantee like you know uh acting is just being one piece of that overall puzzle but it ain't easy to memorize all those lines if you're in no, a not at all, not at all, and mm. that's what I'm saying, man. I mean, some like you are more, you know, pivoted towards that for whatever reason. Your your mind is like you're better suited for that, but it's still yeah. really challenging. But what I'm saying is like that that to me is more challenging. But also thinking about being in his shoes, like if you've got a five day shoot and you've got like 120 pages. And you've got the actors, you got all those shots you're working. I can't imagine what the first AD was going through. Like, Jesus Christ. You've got the same people in every movie. And the first yeah. AD is a trooper. This kid, Connor, we're at, he lives over here. We're going to actually play pickleball. But um, he, he'd he be fun to get on the pod, too, dude. He's a, he's a grinder. And yeah. you, know, you got to put up with the personalities and stuff. And he's just... Yeah, he's actually a very good worker. I imagine very good at like keeping the peace, but also getting things done, not taking things personally. Mm -hmm. um, very impressive. And uh, yeah, what else, man? I mean, yeah, I want to tell you how it went a little bit. I mean, the vibe on set, all the actors are good, of course, as they are on your sets too, of course, from what I've seen. But um, like, <laughs> I I told you from like the last movie I did too, right. One of the biggest things, and I don't know if I'm always perfect at this, but I have to tell myself, don't get caught acting. As in, what I mean by that is, like, when I'm doing the scene with people and by the crew and by the film, if I overcommit to certain stuff and it, like, and I'm just going through the motions of, like, doing this, like, committed uh, behavioral thing mm -hmm. and saying the line a certain way and I'm not really off a reaction or being in the moment and really giving real clarity to like what I'm trying to do and say, then like people will be like, oh, shit. And he actually called me out one scene a little bit, but, but then on other scenes, I'd really feel like it's like, Oh my gosh, I have this great like feeling about how it would be in this moment and how I would be in that moment and those circumstances. And like, really just try to do what that person in that moment would do mm -hmm. and i feel that way then it's like the air comes out of the room and everyone is drawn in and it's like that real moment is un actually unfolding rather than the acting and everyone's always the actors are always thinking and engaged and into the next thing and you can't fake anything it's like really gotta know what's going on at all times in the situation right if that makes sense. It does. Um, yeah. It does. Yeah. So it's just more of um that. And you know, uh, for instance, another example I'm going on, but that same torturing scene. Um, I told myself, I'm like, okay. He gave me one knock, one scene. And like sometimes he just gets a rise out of it. He does pick on some people, but he in one part it was like Dude. Stanley Kubrick vibe. Right. And uh you know, I I don't even want to put this out there because there's so many good things that you said about my stuff. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. He, was, he was like, like, uh, dude, you got to really believe what you're saying, man, or else it's going to sound like it was written. And, you know, that's so generic, whatever. But um, I did take that. I was like, whoa. So I really made my intention in the next scene. I was like, OK, I'm what if I just thought everything through the lens of before yeah. the scene started, of I'm really going to. You know, I'm really being sincere, being sincere. And I said, you know, I'm 
feeling like I'm crazy, but I'm not. And then like, I'm in love with this girl. I, I'm just going to look through the lenses of all that stuff. And I was like starting to think about it. And I was like, oh, this is going to be really interesting. But then I saw her and we were in this situation. We were there and I was just like, oh, no, wait, I need to just, I can't be thinking all that crap. Like, that's fine. But like, just like, you're not present in the moment, be in the moment, be, uh, be real. And like, yep. just, just be a human being, and but let it unfold and say the lines and say it in a way that feels like it would be in that moment. Right. And, uh, and it ended up going incredibly. That's great, man. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that wild? Like you do all this prep and you're going through the thought process, all that stuff. And then you see the actor and you're like, Oh wait, I'm just a human with this other human. Like let's go back and forth. And I don't want to get caught being fake. Yeah. Like not being the human, like it's hard enough to just be. Yeah. And she's meaning something and she's doing this and it's like, okay, well I got to do my best to be real and like mm -hmm. absorb all that with her. And like, mm -hmm. and it's hard to like, really, it's not hard, but it's like, it is a thing. It's like mm -hmm. being, you know, so that yeah uh, and that's... part of something that i think a lot of actors forget is like casting takes care of like 90 percent of the process so like you being cast is this kind of like uh like how would you describe your character like a menacing kind of he seemingly is uh just a good old vanilla project manager but really uh, real estate there's guy something under the surface well, under the surface the this a story goes that he lost his fiance. She left him in the middle of the night because he's love of, he's got a actual condition where he's like obsessed with love. Mm. He's paranoid and he takes meds for it. And so he's a psycho. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's all there, that. in that one short red dress that we did. There was some kind of quality to you. Where it's like, and I don't think you really tapped into it before that much. You usually played, what, like the lawyer, like the young lawyer, the kind of young, like ingenue doctor, whatever. Yeah, that's But my like, character. there's something, but like. Well, like at that time, especially like, as you know, it was more comedic. I was doing like a lot yeah, of like that's right. character stuff, like yeah. very, but it wasn't, we just, you know, I hadn't really gotten my hands on like a juicy, like. Yeah. role. But like, I what I'm what I've found is like 90% of it is in the casting because the filmmaker chose you for whatever reason. They, and that guy saw the same thing that I saw, yeah. Yeah. which is like, there's some kind of quality in there that like some kind of glint in your eye when you turn a certain way, or there, there's something there mm -hmm. that's, it's like a quality. Right. But because you have that naturally, and that's just already there and like the look and the whatever, even if that's not who you are as a person. Sure. And you, it actually in real life i have been in unfortunately i wouldn't ever any ever again but like you know before i was like 21 i was, I was in fights and stuff a little bit yeah um, yeah so yeah you have that that you can tap into to portray in a movie or something but i actually so the first day i did three scenes with the therapist i have three therapy scenes first scene i'm telling her about the girl second scene i'm telling her that the girl's married and that i'm in love with her and that well you know, I have to end up with her. She can't stay with her husband. And in the third scene, I'm just like kind of hysterical. And the therapist is like trying to get me back with meds and I end up killing her. And I, spoiler alert. That escalated fast. It does. And uh, <laughs> dude, the therapist, the woman that played it, she was really funny. She was like, yeah, I mean, I definitely see what they, you have this thing with your eyes where you can just, <laughs> little... That's it, man. It's the, it's oh. very, it's the glint in the eye. I don't know what. But it's there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The mouth and there. you know, you know how to access it too, which is cool. But like the thing is, the thing is, bro, the fact that that's there, the fact that that's just beneath the surface, you don't have to play crazy. That's my point. It's like 90% of the thing, it, it takes care of itself. It's just a matter of like having the right thought, like being in that circle. Yep, you're right. Thought in that moment. Yeah. And because you have that quality visually, you having that thought accesses that part of you. So you don't have to put on anything. You just have to. No, again, if, if you're, you're in the process. head of the, if you're in the head of the crazy, having the thoughts of the crazy, mm -hmm. that's, that's a big part of the fight though. Like that with everything going on everything, if you're, if you're kind of having the correct thought of like, yeah, 
I'll kill them if they don't <laughs> help me. And that's kind of like, it changes how you look at things. I think it's all about thoughts, but um, that's why in prep, a good acting exercise is to like write out the thoughts of what you, you know, of what yeah, would be. Yeah, that's cool. I like and then, that. And then, you know, on the day of, it's like you forget about it, but hopefully a lot of that informs how the scene comes out. Yeah, because you also uh, just yeah. I mean, you, you don't you don't think that you're crazy. That's another part of it. It's like you're not putting that judgment on yourself. You're just going through the thoughts. It's weird because every human being can access the fact that you as a human can like access that part of you. That's inside all of us. It's like yeah. fooling ourselves if we're like, oh, like I'm a nice guy. No, like mo usually the ones who are like, I'm a nice guy are like the most, you know, Dude. under the surface. They're, they're like, they're the opposite. So Spencer Tracy, one of the best actors of all time, said, all you have to do is show up and say your lines, not bump in the furniture. I think that is fine, obviously. And a lot of actors need to remind themselves of that. But also when like going through the script, it's good to answer the questions that would connect the dots between what's in the script and what you don't see. And a lot of those questions are like, why the character does the things they do? And so that you can play that. And like last scene I shot of the day, when I'm killing everyone, I take a gun and I chase down the husband who I try to run over with a car and he's back and he's limping through and I'm like holding a gun to him and it came off really sick. But I'm telling myself on some level before, I was like, why am I killing him? And I'm like, it helps to know why. So you can, that might texture your performance if you know that, you know, so you're acting from a place, a real place. So many actors dream of getting to even this spot of like, you're working, you've got like, you know, you're starring in this lifetime thing. Like, that's a big achievement. Nice. What is it like actually being in it? Because for a lot of people, they think, uh, you know, like once I reach this place, like everything's going to be great. Like I'm going to be so stoked about every part of it, but it's like a job, right? Like it's kind of, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of moments where you're like, yo, like this is awesome. But especially for a shoot like that, that's like five days in a row when you're on like day three, where's your head at? Yeah, you're, you're definitely always at thinking like, I'm pretty down for this to be over. It's work. That I think is mainly because it's low pay. Yeah. Um, it's so quick. It's not lavish. Pro high production value stuff, I gotta say, it's pretty, pretty incredible to show up every day. You don't want it to end. If you're on a big TV show or something like that, right? You're like, I can <laughs> this is paying the bills. Please and thank you. I want more. Yeah. But that's how I am now, at least. That being said. Dude, something like this, I mean, it was a big part for me. I don't like when you have to show up and wait in your trailer for half a day and do nothing. I mean, that's still better than some, but like that feels like you're kind of wasting away for one scene, one small scene. This was like, you're there, you're acting a lot. It's kind of like acting boot camp. Right. It's, it yeah. It is. There's definitely a lot of amazing things about it. It was an amazing opportunity to do this colorful of a role um but also yeah it's it's a big thing for a lot of people to do this type of role even on a small budget but uh but it's so interesting like once you get to that space and you're like doing something you know what i mean it's it's kind of like it's the difference between imagining what it's going to be like and also i'm not taking away from the experience at all i just want to paint the colors of like everything of like what the whole thing was like you memorizing all these lines ahead of time, did you have to keep doing refreshers? Like he's like, okay, we're moving on to the scene. And you're like, yeah, I still did. And yeah, I still, it's a lot of dialogue. Yeah, it is. And like last night, for instance, I hadn't really looked at my scenes today in a while. And so I really put it in time to look them over again, memorizing. I had to do a bit of memorizing this morning and just like, it just doesn't wow. stop. Are yeah. these 12 hour shoot days on set? No, not even 10. 9 30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Dang, man, that's that's nice. 
yeah that's like, a, that's like an office job better yeah that's Dude, crazy. There's, there's something to take away from this guy i'm telling you like it like you can get a lot of notoriety and success especially if you can take this level of efficiency to the big stage and then figure out where they meet each other and that's what it's about man uh it's all mentality and and adopting the mentality of people who are doing the thing which is why like as close as i could get to like even having a conversation would be great but even sure. here's the thing here's the thing though Oh, it's all good. Like even you just telling me like tidbits of this, yeah. the fact that I know that this is even possible, it like shifts your mentality a little yeah. bit. Like, like before my, because the, that feature that I, we did that like, isn't going to come out was something, I think like 15 days. And that was on a budget of like 10 grand. And because I had that experience, I was like, Oh man, like the least amount of days you can ever shoot something out is 15. And the fact that this guy did this whole film, which is longer, by the way, in like a third of the time, and he was legit paying people on set, it's like it it that blows my mind. You know what else he does too? He like gives people a freaking check on set. Wow. And he just he knows how to make it exciting for people. And you know, the fact that he shoots so quick. That that is a lot of the excitement because you feel like it, it's you're not going to sit around and show up and wait for people to do their freaking job. So yeah. I I appreciate that you say that. It's just nice to hear that because I totally agree. It's uh we you know we're telling ourselves that we always got to get better and you know do just keep getting better even if the industry standards something get better than that mm-hmm. get better better always challenge how we're you know do better than you did yesterday. So. If this guy's doing that out there somewhere, someone's going to be doing it even better than them. So, yeah, there's some kind of phenomenon. I forget what it's called, but this is like a concept where it's the amount of time that you give yourself to complete a task. It fills out that time. You heard of that? Yeah. My dad is a big. uh, It's like the Pareto principle. I don't know why that, that might be wrong, but that came to mind. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or someone just brought up, he said, uh, if you can normally do something, it might have been Elon Musk. If you think something takes five months to complete, try to do it in five days. It's something like that. Like the least amount of time. And actually my buddy, Eddie, who's on this podcast, British actor, smart. We, I guess we kind of learned in school, but he was like, it's an obvious thing. See what you can do when you give your full attention to something. Don't take six hours memorizing an audition when you're looking at your phone and not doing yeah. it. Take an hour of where you just don't yeah. look up. You yeah. Know? The, it's all about what is the end result? What are you getting? It's the same result. You can go to the gym and just dick around on your phone for like, you know, two hours when you could get the workout done in an hour. Or and my minutes. that's another example. Yeah, my dad, for instance, he does that very thing. He like he barely takes any rest between. He just goes. Yeah, he just goes, and you get the cardio workout because of that, yeah. and he gets out of there in like thirty five minutes. He's the most ripped freaking sixty yeah. year old I know. Yeah, and and budgetarily too, people, the fact that I've done like the amount of shorts that I've done, and for some of them, I mean, some of them are definitely not as high quality as others, but for the ones that I am proud of, you could. You could have done those for, you know, like 20K or like 50K. I hear of people who raise for like $50,000 to shoot a short. And it's like, wow, impressive. But then you see the short film and you're like, that's the end result. And you could make it for like 200 bucks. So it, it, that's just another example. I thought of you today because someone brought up one of the actors. He's great, but that he's done short films and he loves doing short films. But yeah, he's like, doesn't, I don't think he's done many. And he was just talking about it like it's like a big deal to sh- do short films. And I thought of you because I was like, dude, Jacob's like cranking these things out. Um, and like he does a lot of really good ones. And I didn't really have time, but I was going to bring you up to him and say, to check out your page. But Hey, thanks, bro. Uh, sure. It's really, it, you've wrecked my page to people before. I appreciate you. It's the same. It, it's a different thing, though. This guy doing these features. 
that is something that I haven't heard of. Like the short thing makes sense to me. And I'm ra- I'm tr- I've always been trying to wrap my mind around, like I'm writing something now that's one location, two actors, you know, on purpose in order to make it cheap. But I mean, just hearing that this guy did this thing in five days and like he does. That could be your bread and butter. That could be. You could make a full time living. This guy is like he is. And look, you've already done it in short films. You crank these things out. You have it down to a science. It actually reminds me of you in that way. And why not translate that to features? Yeah, I think it's just a matter of understanding. And I'm getting tidbits from you, but it's it's a matter of understanding. Wrapping your mind around yeah it, it's just it's just getting the model and the model because you have a model for short films do you not yeah i mean but the, but like features like if this guy's paying you guys and he has investors he has a structure in place it's just a matter of understanding that structure and once you can wrap your mind around that then you can just replicate maybe, it maybe you talk to him where's his assistant i mean the way you do short films you do them I mean, I don't think it takes a long time. You, I, the ones that I did with you, I remember we like we got to do a lot of takes and stuff. I would say like, do it as an exercise. Figure out how fast you can shoot stuff and still make it stylish, great, beautiful, mm-hmm. capture the story, and like make it fun. Like, what if you just emulated his same thing? Like, figure out where you can cut, uh, cut costs with location. Make yeah, it location. Make it this. Make it that. Still make it cinematic. Uh, see how you know if you could pay people 350 bucks see if you could do it non-union and yeah. make a freaking feature and then start doing a lot of features yeah. and do it in ways that like it doesn't have to be a big deal you don't have to get six months of touring and yeah. f- festivals and stuff exactly try to figure out a way that you can like just get it to lifetime or something and or- he's got it the fact that he's got it lined up and he knows he's selling it to lifetime that's the whole thing man that's the business he's exit got- plan figure out a good way to make money on it quick and like satisfyingly like not a lot of money but just figure out like it's niche that's what he did and yeah. i think i think you could really earn your bones doing something like that did he write this script too i thought he did but i think he actually has writers that do it yeah i mean bro that's like even more the dream like you just got a team of writers and you just show up to set and you've got the whole model and you know you're gonna sell it and you're making a living. Like yeah. holy shit, he's got a he's got it made. Like fuck, <laughs> like the you, like yeah, getting getting theatrical wide distribution would be the cherry on top. But at the end of the day, bro, this guy is living the dream. What's his name? David Dakota. David Dakota. I'll check out his stuff and I'm curious to see uh your thing, obviously because you're in it. But I've also, done two like, other movies with him as well. What's that? I've done two other movies with him as well. If you want to, wow. Can you, you spell his last name? Uh, it's a tough one. It's like D E, it's like D E, uh, D E C A T E C O. Oh, Dakota. I got it. Cool. Yeah, man. I, so your other two with him are on Lifetime also. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I'm were those also like five day shoots, similar deal? Those were longer. Okay. But, I mean, I know he's done other ones like this, but and everyone that's in his movies has worked with him more than once, basically. Yeah. You find the right team, you're gonna want to work together again, you know. Then you got that also he's got that like secondhand language, I'm sure, where like it must have been cool for you to hear him communicating with his DP. Like they probably got it down to a science. It ain't always pretty, but yeah. They... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, man, five days. Five, five days. days, exactly. Um, but yeah, I'm. I mean, uh, good stuff's coming, you know. Hey, how the how the heck is have you been? Has the day job? Has the teaching? All that stuff's great. Um, just today, one of my friends sent me this uh thing. It's it's monkey paw jordan peele's company for this month is accepting submissions for um it's like they're partnering with tiff where if if you have like a genre thing it's like a script it's your resume it's like you know footage that you've already done all this stuff um but if you if you get accepted i think they're giving out six like 50k 
um, grants for shorts that could then be turned into features and the shorts will go to TIFF. So I'm just, I'm just trying that out. That, that was today's thing. But then beyond that, you're it's school uh, of rock. You're going to school of rocket and get all the kids in your class to like make move, battle the bands. Free yeah. labor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Free labor. <laughs> That's a classic. I got to watch that again. Uh, <laughs> But also I'm, I'm writing this thing now that's uh, I'm targeting like 200 K and uh, and it's like a traditionally shot thing. And I'm partnering with Ken on that one, as far as like finding investors and just getting around that whole thing. We've been barking up that tree now for like a couple of years, but look, man, I feel like we're finally rounding the track. We're, we're going to keep cranking it. Okay. 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 Feel like yeah. Oh right, my yeah. man. <laughs> Old Denzel. There. It'd be wild to shoot a fifty thousand dollar short film. That's just like <laughs> too much freedom for you. It's a little too much. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not gonna put that out there. No, it's a perfect amount. It's perfect. No, I know what you're saying, and dude. What? Well, we know that you can rise up and do like insane things with that. But it's just, yeah, it deserves to be said. Like, bro, you fucking. You've run it with 2,000, 200, 20. Yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah. So after this shoot, are you now, are you auditioning again? I mean, you're just, you're on the last day. So I'm sure you're going to rest for like a week or something, but you got your pickleball day job coming up. Yeah, man. I got certified for pickleball. I got the other day job as well that I'm assistant to the assistant, but I'm not working tomorrow. I think God. So I'm uh really looking forward to sleeping just sleeping bro you're at you're doing the thing you're living the dream you're a working actor mm -hmm. it's crazy <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, yeah, bro again you. again like look back at what your self like five years ago would say to this guy now it's like yeah like like the standard just becomes the new normal so fucking quick and by next year you're gonna be like oh yeah you know it was an honor to be nominated, but uh, still didn't close it. I'm going to be like, wait the fuck up. What wait are you talking up. about? Um, I genuinely don't know if this is quite that. Though. It's like a you know, lifetime. Like, it's fine. But all right, bro. All right. Good begets good. I, I know big things are coming. This is and it's a good experience. Facts. And I'm stoked to see this one. Like you starring in this type of role is going to be really fun. 100%. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Get some sleep, bro. Get Enjoy some sleep. Tomorrow. Congrats. Hey, thank you. Great yeah. talking. Talk we'll to you later. See you next time. Bye. Sounds good.